All right. Well, guess what we're going to talk about now? You didn't think I was done, did you? I'm not. We're going to talk about emotions and how they impact judges' decision making. Judges get so emotional, just like the rest of us do. Let's talk about the research. All right. Bye bye, Whitney. Sorry. Well, you may have heard that judges are supposed to be, quote, dispassionate. Dispassionate. That means that judges are not supposed to be emotional. They're not supposed to allow things like emotions to get in the way of rational decision making. They're supposed to allow the facts, the evidence, not their emotions, to make decisions. The question is, can they do that? Are they any more capable of removing the influence of emotional states than the average juror is in their decision making? Join me on slide number 13. No. I know you guys aren't surprised that I'm saying that. Research indicates judges' decisions are impacted by their feelings, their emotions towards litigants. If it's a civil case, defendants in a criminal case. They are impacted by something called the affect heuristic, just like laypersons are. You should know what this is. Talked about this last week when I was talking about jurors. Remember what the affect heuristic is about. It has to do with emotional states impacting the way jurors, what I talked about last week, the way jurors make decisions about cases. Remember I told you there's a difference the research shows between anxiety and anger. Anxiety and anger, you learned last class, influence how in depth or how shallow the process of considering evidence is when jurors are making it, right? Remember what I taught you. Anger triggers heuristic processing, a more shallow, efficient, but more shallow way of making decisions about the evidence. Anxiety triggers a slower decision-making process where more information is considered. Judges are no more immune to the affect heuristic, to the impact of emotions than your average juror are. They are no more capable of removing emotional responsivity from their decision making. They're not dispassionate the way that they supposedly believe they are. Wistrich and colleagues found that judges cannot divorce their emotions from their decision making and like laypersons, meaning like everyday average people who serve on juries. Judges often rely on intuitive emotional reactions, which is the affect heuristic, rather than effortful, deliberate, analytic processing of information when they make their decisions. Wistrick, Wistrick, that's not the person's name. Wistrich Guthrie and Rashlinsky, I mentioned them. These, these folks have done a lot of work on judges' decision-making. I mentioned them earlier in this lecture today. They tested whether or not judges are influenced by their feelings towards litigants. Because prior research has shown that jurors are influenced by their feelings towards litigants, both in hypothetical criminal cases and civil cases. So defendants, criminal cases, litigants, and civil cases. In their 2015 study, Wistrich, why can't I say this person's name? Wistrich, Wistrich and colleagues in 2015 collected data over a six year period. Six years, from 2008 to 2014, from state and federal judges in the United States and Canada, so they looked across countries, they got their population of judges for their study from those who were attending what are called continuing education programs around the United States for judges. Wistrich and colleagues presented the judges in their study with hypothetical scenarios 
that were very similar to current legal and social financial matters that come forth in the court system. Things like illegal immigration, medical marijuana, strip searches, credit card debt issues, narcotic searches by police, and pollution issues that you would find companies potentially being sued for. So criminal cases and civil cases. What they found is that judges could not divorce their emotions from their decision making regardless of the facts of the case. For example, judges were randomly assigned to what was considered, quote, an emotional condition and a non-emotional condition for each of these different types of legal matters. I'll give you an example using the illegal immigration scenario. The judges who received the emotional condition, randomly assigned to the emotional condition, read the defendant in the case who illegally um, immigrated to the U.S. was a father who was trying to enter the country illegally in order to earn more money to pay for an organ transplant, a liver transplant for his nine-year-old son, uh, sorry, daughter, who would die if she didn't get the transplant. In the non-emotional condition that half the judges were randomly assigned to, judges read the defendant entered the country illegally in order to track down somebody who stole money from him from the sale of a drug cartel he was involved in. So here's the thing. Both cases involved illegal immigration behavior. In one case, the emotional condition, the person did it to save a child. In the other condition, the person did it because of money lost from an illegal activity. What the researchers found is even though the immigration was illegal in both cases, the judges were far more lenient and weighed the evidence differently in the case where the illegal immigration happened to save a child versus the case that involved drug sales. They did these hypothetical scenarios across all of the different types of issues. The strip search, like an illegal strip search, um, the um, pollutants that a company was being sued for, et cetera, et cetera. And what they found in all those situations, they had an emotional version, and a non-emotional version of the fact, and judges were randomly assigned to one or the other. And what they found is that when the judges were randomly assigned to the emotional conditions for any of these types of crimes, they were less likely to find the individuals guilty, they were more likely to give lenient sentences if they found them guilty, and they were more likely to interpret literally the same exact laws in ways that favored the defendant compared to if they were in the non-emotional condition. So what the researchers concluded from this is judges appear to be human first, judges second. They're not dispassionate. By the way, the gender of the judge didn't make a difference. Female judges and male judges were prone to the same exact biases. It's not women are more passionate, men aren't. No, no, no.